everyone, I hope you're having a good time at OnCon so far. My name is Kira and this panel is called Anime That Helps, series that encourage and heal. And I'll get into why I wanted to do um, this panel very soon, but you know, as a disclaimer, anime is not a replacement for therapy, but it's, 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 it's something, all right? So just gonna throw that out there first thing. Um, so a little bit about myself and the panel. Um, again, my name is Kira, and I tend to really just love relaxing slice of life anime. Um, those tend to be my favorite types of shows. And in this panel, I chose anime that helped me personally in life, whether it was um, to be more encouraged, um, to start a new hobby, or um, just help me with mental health issues, maybe anxiety or depression, which I know a lot of people have. And uh, I'm hoping that because a lot of these series personally help me in my life, maybe if you pick them up and you watch them, um, they'll help you in small ways in your life too. Um, so I also wanna discuss the conflict rating in this panel when I recommend an anime. Um, the last thing that people wanna do when maybe they're feeling depressed or ha they have a lot of anxiety is watch something with a lot of conflict. Um, maybe this is different for different people, but when I'm feeling that way, I don't want to watch stuff like Parasite or Elfin Lead or Attack on Titan and, and stuff like that. I don't really want to watch. I want to watch very happy, easy to absorb things um, that are encouraging and just happy-go-lucky, very feel-good shows. Um, so I have implemented into this panel a conflict rating, which all of these series that I'm going to show you have very, very low conflict, um, but there might be some that maybe deal with friends fighting or bad relationships um, or maybe uh, even uh, something tragic like a family member passing away. Um, these concepts can still be in very relaxing, slice of life, feel good anime. So I just put this content rating here for that. Um, number one, kind of being like, there's no conflict whatsoever. Like the biggest thing that might happen is like, oh, I found a lost cat and I have to find its owner. Not a huge conflict. And then number five, maybe being um, more heavy, like um, maybe a death of a family member, but it's not something that is necessarily shown in a gruesome way in the show, um, like many other shows might show. Um, it, it, it would just be something that happens. So um, I hope that makes sense. And I'll definitely explain each content rating um, through each show that I show off. So without further ado, let's start with the first anime that, um, or one of the first anime well, the first anime on this list, it's actually a much newer anime. It aired last year, so it's not one of the first ones that encouraged me to do stuff, but um, it's just first on this list. <laughs> so this is Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater. Um, this show deals with picking up a new hobby, facing your fears, and I would rate this show at a level two conflict. Not that much happens, and I'll kind of explain um, where the conflict lies in this show. Um, Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater follows um, the main character, her name is Hina, and she moves from the big city to this countryside, uh, small town in Japan, seaside town in Japan. And she is actually more of an artist type, um, an arts and crafts type. And she's very excited to, to join high school and um, get into like the arts and crafts club. She actually does a lot of um, crocheting. So she's good at untangling um, like yarn and different kinds of strings and that kind of craft. So she ends up um, in a situation where she's meeting up with a, a girl in the fishing club at school. And she ends up untangling fish line. And because of how good she is at untangling fish line, the girls in this fishing club try to get her to join their club. And the thing with Hina is that she's very squeamish when it comes to like fish and crustaceans and, and anything having to do with, with just fishing and the water and stuff like that. Because you have to think she's a city girl 
and normally wouldn't have to deal with those kinds of things. But now she's living her life for the first time in a seaside town where that stuff is way more normal. So she ends up getting kind of put into this club and she's very not so sure about it at first. Um, but as the series goes, she learns how to uh, catch fish and, 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 and gut them and cut them up to make sashimi and stuff like that, which at the very beginning of the series, she is very against. She won't touch a fish. She doesn't like looking at fish. Um, the other girls in the club are very used to like taking the bones out, taking the guts out. And um, that is something that she can't even watch. And as the show goes on, she gets a little bit better about it. Um, not all the way, but the, the other girls in the club try to teach her these things and um you'll see the the character here that's actually next to Hina the main character the girl with the uh, mud all over her face um she's a very country girl um she doesn't mind getting dirty and touching fish and anything that comes out of the ocean and so um it's funny how they become such good friends despite their differences but um what I really do like about the show and how how it kind of helped me a little bit is that I am very um scared of, of bugs and of like arachnids mostly and it's I I relate to Hina the main character here because she's scared of those things and she's learned to overcome it now I have not learned to overcome my fear of spiders but it is a constant process but um you know if you have even the weirdest kinds of, of fears what if you're scared of fish? <laughs> this might be encouraging to you because, uh, yeah, throughout the series, she does end up taking a fish and being able to to cut it up and and properly um, properly fix it up to be eaten. Um, it's just really cool to see her grow, and it's really cool to see all the other characters being there for her and encouraging her. And there's really not all that much conflict outside of just being disgusted by fish. <laughs> Um, so I will say that if you're a little bit squeamish when it comes to like gutting fish, the show does show stuff like that. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, but yeah, great, great one. Uh, Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater, highly recommend. The first season came out last year, so it's very new. Um, and I, I binged the show probably in a day or two. I love it. I think it's only 12 or 13 episodes. Um, so again, this one's really good for overcoming your fears and trying new things that you originally don't think you ever would have been into. Um, the next series I want to talk about is Encouragement of the Climb. I'm going to check my time here to make sure that I'm not running over too bad. Okay, Encouragement of the Climb is very similar to Diary of Days at the Breakwater, but instead of fishing, it's mountain climbing. So it's, it's very much about overcoming obstacles and um, also getting discovering a new hobby. Um, now this show I have at a level three conflict, which I'll kind of um, explain as we go. But um, the reason why I kind of have it at a level three conflict is because um, these are high school girls and sometimes they run into situations where like normal high school girls like, oh man, why isn't she talking to me today? Is there something wrong? Did I do something wrong? And it, it's, it's a little bit about... Um, balancing your friendship in a way. So I put it at a level three conflict. Um, the main character, the kind of short haired blonde girl, Aoi is very scared of heights due to an accident that she had um, as a child <laughs> while mountain climbing, nothing too extreme. Um, and she eventually goes to you know her new high school and she meets up with her childhood friend named Hina, who is a veteran mountain climber and um they actually used to mountain climb together as kids and got separated in middle school and then now that they're in high school um they've reunited again and Hina tries to get Aoi to like come mountain climbing with her and at first Aoi just like in the last series that we talked about Hina was very um not so sure about the fishing club Aoi's also not so sure about mountain climbing due to her fear of heights but um the girls decide to hike just tons of mountains. I think they climb like a new mountain almost every episode. Uh, real mountains in Japan, by the way, mostly in the Kanto region. Um, the girls, they they 
climb all these mountains together. Real places that you can actually go in Japan, by the way. The, um, the screenshot to, like, actual real life in this series is really cool to see. Um, I really want to go to some of the mountains that they climb, actually. Um, I've been to one of them. Scuba, Mount Scuba, which is here in Ibaraki Prefecture. Um, they climb in, the, in season three of the show, I believe. Um, but it's, it is about overcoming obstacles together and encouraging people who are new at something to never give up. And I think uh, one of the other reasons why I put this at a conflict uh, number three rating was because, um, and this isn't very spoilerish. Th these shows are very hard to spoil <laughs> due to their nature, but um, they're they decide that they want to climb Mount Fuji, which if you know, you know, is a very, very difficult task. Sometimes for people, it's the hardest thing they ever do is climbing Mount Fuji just because of how high it is and how prone to um, evolution, uh, uh, evol evol uh, evolution, evol <laughs> elevation, <laughs> there's the word, elevation sickness that you can get if you climb that high. Um, there are a set of a couple episodes, um, where they attempt to climb Mount Fuji and it's a very, very hard task and they're very realistic about how hard it is to climb Mount Fuji. So that's where some of the conflict can lie too. And, um, there are instances where Aoi, the girl who is, who was originally scared to climb, feels like she is, she never wants to feel like she's bringing down her friend Hina, who is just, a amazing at climbing and um she, she do you, have you ever had like a friend where they're introducing you to this new hobby but you feel like you don't want to drag them down you don't want to slow them down she kind of deals with that a little bit like oh man I would love to climb this huge mountain but what if I can't do it and I slow down Hina you know what I mean so um that's why the conflict level I put more at level three, but it's also like, not, no pun intended, but it's just, it does encourage you to go climbing and encourages you to go mountain climbing. For me in my own life, like I'm not, I was never the biggest hiking fan. I think I went hiking a few times in um, like middle school and high school, but um, I watched a show and it makes me really want to go hike other mountains. So um, just last year after I watched a show, I went to go hike Mount Scuba and that was really fun. And it, it just reminded me of the show. And now I want to go climb more mountains in Japan because of the show. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 that's healthy. That's very healthy. Hiking is healthy for you. So um, yeah, this show kind of not only impacted my mindset, but um, my, my health too. And had me pick up another hobby, honestly. So encouragement to climb, it's wonderful. Um, there are three seasons of it out right now, 12 episodes each show. So you've got a good like, let's see if I can math here, 36-ish ish episodes out there. Um, and I think they're only like 10 minutes long. So they're a little shorter, but I highly recommend it. So the next show I want to discuss is New Game. Um, I don't think I ever realized how an anime can impact me until I watched New Game. Um, New Game is about living your dream job. It's about the competitiveness of the art world and of the graphic design world. Um, Work-life conflict. What's it like being the newbie at work? And I placed this at a level 2.5 conflict because I really couldn't decide if I wanted to set it at 2 or 3, so 2.5 it is. Um, and I'll explain why I put it that at that level. Um, but New Game follows um, this uh, the purple-haired character that you see right here. Um, Aoba Suzukaze gets her dream job as a character designer at a place called Eagle Jump. Eagle Jump um, made her, one of her favorite game series of all time. And so, I mean, imagine like your favorite game series is Final Fantasy and you love character design and you want to design Final Fantasy characters and right out of high school, you're, you're 18. This is, Aoba's only 18 in the show. You get hired by Square Enix to like do characters for the next Final Fantasy game. Maybe not so realistic, but this is the reality for Aoba Suzukaze, our main character. <laughs> so um, it, it, it goes through kind of her everyday work life and being new, and if anyone has ever done art before, you know that in a lot of cases it can be very competitive. Um, 
And I know a lot of artists tend to compare themselves to others. And this show deals with that a little bit. Like, oh, I hope that this character design is going to impress the people that have been with this business for years. Like, am I as the newbie going to live up to the standards and the expectations that they have for me? And um, her, Aoba Suzukaze's boss is like her idol. Um, because uh, Aoba's boss created characters that she remembers playing uh, in the in this game that she loves, and she just wants to make sure that she's good enough to the person that she admires the most. Um, and that's where I kind of put the conflict level at two point five, um, because I know a lot of people do get depressed and do get very anxious about their their art, and and this shows that too. Um, but then it's just, some of the episodes, the conflict is is like not that much at all. <laughs> like, for example, if you've worked in an office, you know how it is. Some of the conflict is just, hey, the air conditioner is on way too low. And it's just like this constant like five to ten minutes of the characters getting up and changing and like the hilariousness that comes with like changing the air or the heat in the office. Um, I, I sometimes I've called this like the office, but for anime, like with Moe anime girls and there's some truth in that. But what the series meant to me basically is, um, it was so encouraging to see these characters, um, use programs like Illustrator and, and Photoshop and, um, all these like 3D model programs that, um, I use myself in stuff. And it was just encouraging to see them work so hard to get stuff done and, when I watched this, I was almost coming out of college and I, this show encouraged me to complete my entire graphic design portfolio when I came out of college so that I could, um, like advertise myself for doing graphic design commissions. And this is the show that did it. I don't know. I was just delaying it and delaying it, and delaying it. And something about this show, seeing how creative they were and how hardworking they were in their own craft encouraged me to do the same. And so if, if you're an artist, especially if you're into character design or into 3D modeling or into just game design in general. Uh, the show, I think, will be very encouraging to you. There's two seasons of 12 episodes each, uh, 12 or 13 episodes each, and uh, I think it's wonderful. Uh, okay, next one. A place further than the universe. <sighs> oh man, there's so much that happens here. Um, in this show and I'll try to do my best to remember everything because every episode it's like you're watching a movie there's so much happening in one episode um this show kind of kind of talks about adventure and, and dreams that seem impossible um and I put this show at a level five conflict and you'll definitely understand why so um the black haired character here uh, Shirase, I believe is her name. You'll have to, uh, you'll have to um, excuse me, because sometimes I can't remember all the characters' names. But um, this char black-haired character, she, her mother is lost. And got lost because um, she went on an expedition to Antarctica, of all places. And um, through a certain situations, she became lost. And... Um, has not yet been found. And so Shirase wants to go to Antarctica to see if she can find her mother. I know that sounds like a crazy, ridiculous thing, but everyone else in the show to her is like, yeah, this is kind of ridiculous. Like you probably should give up on trying to go to Antarctica. And um, through, through certain situations, um, her and three of her schoolmates decide that they will join her in her adventure to go to Antarctica, and they end up finding um, Antarctica researchers who are uh, Japanese, and um, they get the incredible chance to join an Antarctica team, and they fly out to Singapore, and then they fly to Australia, and then they take this boat all the way to Antarctica. But Antarctica is, them being in Antarctica is less, is the less important thing in the show, and it's more about like, how they get there and how they overcome people telling them that like, oh, you can't do this. You can't do this. It's not going to happen. Um, so yeah, it's overcoming what other people think about you and your dreams. And like, honestly, the reason why I felt like this related to me was because, um, you know, I had always wanted to go to Japan. 
um, or live in Japan rather since I was a kid. And I very commonly got told that I would never make it because I was too dumb to learn the language. I'm too picky of an eater. Um, I wouldn't enjoy the food here. I wouldn't fit into society. So I got, I got told like tons of things ever since I was in middle school. And, um, you know, I, at that point I'd never learned to like drown out p other people's opinions. Um, and that happens in the show where like friends of these characters go as far as to make up rumors about them in school just because they're jealous about them having big dreams. And um, so it deals with that. And it also deals with when the girls leave Japan and make their way to Antarctica. Um, it talks about leaving unresolved things at home. And like when, when you leave a, a place, sometimes people have this mindset of like, you're leaving your problems and conflict behind but that's not ever true it always ends up following you no matter how far away you go and so it deals with that too um for example one of the characters um has really bad conflict with some schoolmates some um club mates back at her school who spread bad rumors about her and were jealous of her because uh, she's very talented at sports and because it's a sports club, they kind of were too jealous of her. So they kind of kicked her out and lots of gaslighting and stuff like that. So very toxic relationships. And while the girls are in Antarctica, um, they tell these toxic friends, these toxic classmates to just, for lack of better word, to F off. And I feel like that that is a very realistic way of dealing with the situation because I feel like what anime does a lot of times is it tries to make everything a happy ending. I'm not saying every anime, but generally a lot of anime will be like, oh, you have a toxic relationship with this person. You know, let's talk about friendship and, and getting along together and somehow magically the two get the two parties get along. But this kind of more teaches that it's okay to cut people if they're not good for your mental health. Um, and that is something that I haven't really seen too much in anime and A Place for the Universe just dealt with this in a way um, that I, I really appreciate. It didn't, uh, it's so hard to explain. You'll just have to like watch the show to get it. But um, at, at first, when I first started to watch the show, I thought it was going to be more about their time in Antarctica. And you know, for a few episodes it is, but a lot of it is, um, is very mental and is about relationships. So, um, I put it at a conflict level number five because, you know, the, one of the main characters is searching for her missing mom in Antarctica and it does deal with, um, one of the characters growing up without any friends and, uh, just a slightly heavier things, um, a lot of emotions being shown in the show. But I I think that this show um, helped me, like, just kind of dr drown out and get rid of what other people think about what you're doing. And, you know, do your own thing. Have your own dreams. And that's why I like this show a lot. Um, it, this is also only 12 episodes. So it's, it's uh, most of these are, I, short attention span. I love my short shows. Um. So let's see, what's our time here? Oh, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, the next show I wanna talk about, oh man, how do I even begin? Um, Yuru Camp, which I think is one of the more popular shows on this list. Um, Yuru Camp is about discovering new places, spending time alone, making friends. And I put it at a level one conflict. This is our first level one conflict of the panel um, because really nothing happened, like, I think the worst thing ever that happens is like, oh, we the show's about camping, by the way. I should throw that out there. But the worst conflict I think like ever happens in the show is something like, oh, we went camping in winter and it's going to be very cold and we do not have proper, we do not have like proper uh, equipment to face this cold weather. What are we gonna do? Oh, we're gonna go eat Odin and other warm things in a neighbor's tent. Problem solved, yay! <laughs> so it's, it's, that, that's what makes this show so easy to watch. You could be having the worst day ever, pick up your camp and like your day will be much better, trust me. Um, so your camp mostly follows um, Reen, 
who enjoys solo traveling and enjoys camping all alone. Um, in fact, in the very first episode, she goes out uh, camping all by herself. And most of what the first episode is, is her setting up the campfire, um, warming up ramen, building the tent, uh, just you know, finding the perfect place to camp. Um, and and when you're watching it, you, you just, you're just like, okay, when's the conflict going to happen? When's the conflict going to happen? It doesn't. It doesn't. And that's the nice thing about it. Um, I know I can always turn this on and and not feel like, like I could turn on any episode I want and not feel like I'm going to be stressed by watching the show, um, which is nice. It's, it's, it's a show about, I, I want to say it's like, it's a show about nothing, but nothing but camping, but its presentation is so good. It, it, it just makes you interested, even if you're not the camping type. It makes you very interested in camping, especially in Japan. Now, Reen enjoys traveling and camping all alone, and she ends up meeting Narashiko and, like, other friends that are in her town and at her school and stuff. And it's very interesting. Like, I thought that the show was going to go from, oh, you shouldn't camp alone. Like, camping with friends is so much more fun. And the show a little bit touches on that like oh man like it is fun to camp with friends but in the continuing season reen still enjoys being alone and um i think it's it's very much to me what it it tells me is like like a lot of self-love and and spending time with yourself is okay because the show could have just been oh well now Reen doesn't camp alone anymore. She camps with friends, but it doesn't do that. Like Reen has learned how to balance time with friends and spending time by herself. And I really love that because um, I'm also someone who, who loves to spend time by themselves. And Japan is perfect for that. Like Japan, it's not weird if you go to the movie theater by yourself or if you go to a sit down restaurant. I feel like in America, if you go to like Applebee's or something and you're just by yourself, people are always like, oh, that poor person <laughs> is by themselves. In Japan, it's not like that. It's much more common to be uh, alone doing stuff that you would normally do with friends, I think. Um, but that's why I, I, I like this. Um, sometimes some episodes will only follow like one particular character and like their thoughts with themselves and um, how they take care of themselves on on their trips and stuff like that. So um, all of that plus uh, a lot of these characters like Nashiko, she picks up this new hobby, camping. So um, yeah, this show... Do, the show does a lot. It does a lot. It makes you want to go camping. It makes you want to get out in nature more. Um, it it makes you want to maybe, this sounds so cheesy, but like find yourself in solo camping in a way. Um, I just, I feel like if you were to tell someone that you were going camping alone, they'd be like, are you okay? Are you trying to find yourself? It's just like, no, not really. It's just, for me, it would be so, I've like normalized it so much. And um yeah, wonderful show. There's two seasons of it. Both are like 12 to 13 episodes each. And as I said, not much conflict happens, but it's just the characters are so charming and lovely. Um, you get to see a lot of really cool sides of Japan, like Shizuoka and Yamanashi and Mount Fuji and stuff. So I, uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. This is probably the most relaxing show on the list. Um, so if you, if you can enjoy this one, I think you'll enjoy it every other show on the list too. So you camp is absolutely fantastic. Did I give this one a content rating? Oh yes, level one, duh. <laughs> okay, the next show I want to talk about is Mitsuboshi Colors. Oh, okay. Oh man, Mitsuboshi Colors. Um, Mitsuboshi Colors is cute elementary school girls just playing around in the hectic city of Tokyo. Um, this has very funny, but sometimes kind of crudish level of humor. And what I mean by that is like one of the girls, her like main jokes is relating everything to poop and toilets and stuff. <laughs> and, but that, that, that's a child for you, <laughs> I, I guess. So, um, Funny yet sometimes crude rumor and conflict level of just one because, again, the conflict in this show is basically just the same as 
oh, this cat scratched my arm. I need to find a Band-Aid. Stuff like that. Stuff that, like, kids might think is tragic to them, but it's really not. Um, so Mitsuboshi Colors. Um, the This uh, group of three girls, they call themselves Colors, and they uh, basically try to solve these issues or mysteries around Ueno, Tokyo, which is the area that their clubhouse is in and the area where they mostly play in the anime and stuff. Um, and it just goes, it just uh, depicts their daily life solving these mysteries, which are never like really that big of mysteries at all. <laughs> and um, they are always bugging uh, the local policeman at the Koban, which a Koban it's like a police box in Japan, which, uh, pro tip, if you ever come to Japan and you need the cops, uh, going to the Koban, the little police boxes, they're much more helpful than, like, the big police stations, in my experience. <laughs> anyway, so they're always, um, going to, like, Ueno Park and, and, um, harassing the, uh, adult cop that works there and just all these funny, like, what, what is it they have here? If this screenshot alone doesn't make you want to watch the show. Anyway, so they just go around with all these antics. And it's some of the funniest writing I think I've ever seen in a show. I think there, I, I, there's very few shows I can think of that made me laugh more than this. Probably uh, Asobi Asobase uh, probably made me laugh this much. It's, it's, it's similar humor. It's less... Um, the humor in this show is less perverted because <laughs> they're just elementary school girls than... Um, so we also boss but it's like the same kind of, um, it's, it's very similar comedy. So ridiculous scenarios and it's oddly relaxing for being based in Tokyo. And I think that's a cool dynamic that the show has is that it's placed in Ueno, Tokyo, one of the most busiest areas of Tokyo, but also has a, a way of being relaxing. And I think it's just, you know, you have these elementary school girls who are so carefree um, surrounded by adults who are probably stressed and going to work and just the rush of, of big cities like Tokyo, New York. Um, it's, it's kind of a very cool mix that I think they did here. So Mitsuboshi Colors, um, I would definitely pick up if you're needing some laughs. Um, the show really helped me, uh, you know, when, if I'm like feeling down or depressed about something, throw in Mitsuboshi Colors, you'll, I, I promise you, you'll have a laugh. It's very funny. Um, so let's see, Mitsuboshi Colors. Okay, I think this next one might be our last show. Ah, yes, this is our last one. Okay, um, Nono Biori, um, which is another, I think, relatively popular one on this list. Nono Biori is similar to Mitsuboshi Colors, which we talked about earlier, because it also follows, um, like elementary school girls in their daily lives, but Nono Biori takes place in rural Japan which countryside life, ruralness, is usually already related to a relaxing life, whereas like Tokyo and big cities is, it feels like more of a, uh, a less relaxed life. So the setting for this is perfect. Um, and there are a lot of, of during the runtime, it focuses a lot on nature and music. And a lot of things in the show are also done non-verbally. It's a lot of um, like just, just let the animation do the talking. You don't have to let even the characters do the talking. And I'll give you, I'll give you, a, um, an example of that in a second. But I put it also at a level one conflict because nothing, nothing bad that I can remember or know of happens in this show. I think the saddest thing that I remember happening in the show is I want to say it was season one when Renge, the purple haired girl right here, um, makes a new friend and then that new friend moves to Tokyo and it's kind of sad and like that's kind of the worst it gets. It doesn't get any more, uh, it doesn't get worse than that basically. Um, and as I said, a lot of the runtime focuses on nature compared to other anime. Like in, um, in fact, I think the first whole like minute and a half, maybe two minutes of the first episode of the show just shows scenes around rural Japan and shows Renge, or it doesn't even show Renge, but it's the uh, the music is Renge playing on her her recorder um, instrument, 
And it, it sets the tone. Like, I love the first two minutes of the show because it really sets the tone for what you're getting. It's like, this is no known Biori. You're not going to get Titans fighting each other. You're not going to get um, guns and shooting and blood and all this stuff. That's not this kind of show. So I like that it opens up like that. Um, e- even like between, in the middle of scenes, if there is a, a joke, like the um, the punchline of a joke, sometimes will happen after like maybe 30 to 45 seconds of just uh, pans of scenery <laughs> and, and just scenes of trees and cows and bugs and stuff like that. And then, you know, after that 45 seconds of silence, boom, there's the punchline of the joke. <laughs> and I love that it takes all that, that much time. Cause it, there's not, this show is so good if you have trouble absorbing a lot of information at one time, because it's not throwing that much information at you. So it's very easy to digest and very easy to watch. Um, in fact, one of my favorite scenes in the series is, um, Renge, do I have a better, there, there she is. Um, Renge, the purple haired girl, she's only like five or six years old throughout the series. Um, she's basically a first grader and she wants to learn how to ride a bike. And I think like the scene might be like two and a half to three minutes long of her and one of her adult friends who owns the candy store in town. So you can kind of understand how they're friends. Like if you're a six year old girl, you want to make good friends with the candy store owner. So she makes friends with the candy store owner and the candy store owner teaches her how to ride a bike. And it's just, it's just like two and a half, three-ish minutes of, of just music, no talking, of just her, uh, learning how to ride a bike. And it's, it's, it's cute and touching and you don't need dialogue. Um, if you're going to show, if you're going to show, if what you're showing is so powerful, you know what I mean? So, um... There's just a lot of hilarious banter between, you know, the kids because they're only elementary school people. And it's just oddly nostalgic. Like it, re- it reminds me of, of growing up in the countryside and, you know, before having all the technology we have now, um, I, I guess people did spend more time outside and because uh, that, that was where the fun was to be had. And so it just, it's also very nostalgic in that way. Um, but the conflict is just not that much either. Um, it's just, it's very heartwarming. One of the, the, the newest season just aired, season three, and one of the heartwarming things about it is that Renge meets a friend that's younger than her. Throughout almost the whole series, Renge is the youngest one um, in the group because everyone else is like a fifth grader or a fourth grader, basically. And so she's used to being the youngest one. And um, she meets a new friend who's like maybe kindergarten or preschool. And so now she feels like the senpai. She feels like the... Um, the uh onetan you know what i mean like she feels like the, the older sister so that's also very very heartwarming but i i just recommend this show for uh if you deal with like depression and anxiety this will definitely help relax it just in the same way that Eurocamp camp will um in fact like no no Biori is my second favorite anime of all time and Eurocamp camp is like number three <laughs> so that's kind of how similar that they are um, and this show, I remember, I think I picked it up in 2015 when I was feeling like really bad. And I, I had watched a few, um, you know, slice of life kind of anime, but my favorite slice of life anime were like Azumanga Daio and Lucky Star and those kinds of things were like crazy things are happening all the time. And there's so much information being thrown at you. I had never watched something so relaxing until Nono Biori um, about six years ago. And um, I loved it. And I think this anime, um, I don't know, like it, 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 if I was having a really bad day, I could just watch this anime and immediately like forget all my problems and this anime was re- is very easy to fall asleep to as well and I mean that in a good way not that it's boring but um it was just I was able to to get to sleep uh because of how calming the show is so I definitely recommend it if you're someone that uh deals with anxiety and depression because it will just take that away the best it can so yeah Nona Biori I it's funny Nona Biori and Yuru Camp they aired, um, Nona Biori's third season and Eurocamp's second season aired in the same season. And 
I'll, I'll let you know now, I haven't finished either of them because I don't know what I'm going to do when they're over. I think I have like two more episodes of each one left and I'm not ready for them to end. If that gives you an idea, I have trouble completing stuff that I love because I don't want them to end. So yeah, there's that. Um, I think that's the last one on the list. Yep. Um, all right, guys, I think that is my panel. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the chat um, if there's an anime on the list that you are um, intrigued about and that you might watch because that would be awesome. Also, if there's an anime that I uh, didn't mention that you have found relaxing or you have found encouraging, good for your mental health, good for your soul, uh, also drop it in the chat and I would love to talk and respond to you uh, during that time. Anyway, um, if you want to follow me on social medias and stuff, uh, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash ginger and guiden. Um, I do videos on anime sometimes, like I'll, I'll do like top fives of, um, different seasons of anime and like top, like my top 10 anime of like each year. So I'll do a bit of that, but mostly what I do is, um, Japan videos about traveling in Japan. I'll do uh, anime pilgrimages. Like for example, I've been to where Lucky Star takes place. I've been to where Anohana takes place. And I have a lot of plans this year. Uh, you know, heaven forbid the pandemic gets worse. But um, I have a lot of things planned this year that I think you'll find interesting if you are interested in Japan and anime. So yeah, go check out that channel. And then my Twitter is at Kira Hedgehog and I'm mostly just talking about video games and anime on there as well. Um, anyway, thanks to uh, Brent and Anime Archaeology and all of those affiliated um, with OnCon. Uh, thank you so much for watching guys and I hope you have a good rest of your con. Uh, see you later. <laughs>